Right, Conor McGregor is going downhill rapidly. No, I'm, I'm joking. I don't know if he is or not. True Geordie made this video, and I thought, yeah, you, you probably... I mean, I've made... The only really MMA art, artist I took... Artist? Well, he is an artist, and I'm going to show you a clip later where he compares himself to an artist. Um... But yeah, the only MMA um, guy I really follow is Connor. I love Nate Diaz as well. I think that fight was just amazing. But I only really follow Connor, and um, I'm just saddened by it because Connor was such a dominant guy. Um, I don't care what anyone says, you know, the Khabib loss and all that. But um, he was so dominant. He was so on point. It was unreal. And uh, sadly, um, this is a recent interview, and like True Geordie says, uh, does he need rehab? Basically, does Connor need rehab? And I've made a video, you know, probably four or five months ago, saying it's cocaine abuse because um, <clears throat> I um, I was an addict once as well, and um, so I'm gonna, I'll tell you about my story when I OD'd. But let's get into the video anyway. I'll tell you a bit about that in a minute. What did Jake bring to the table from the real? So I just want to say, uh, just look at Connor's face. Look at, um, he's clearly coming down, uh, in my opinion. He's clearly on a massive come down. Um, it just, not unless he's at the end of a night out. I, I presume this interview is in the day. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, let's go. When it came to the fighting. Jake's a consummate professional. 75 movies made. That's a Ryan Garcia voice if you've ever heard one. Yeah, so um, I thought that was quite a good point. Um, if, you, if you've ever done cocaine, um, you know it messes your nose up and uh, you end up with like a bit of a croaky voice and you know what I mean? It just messes all you. You know, you've been smoking all night because when you're doing gear, you don't stop smoking. You've got to fat, you're like, yeah, mate, yeah, like, I'm going to fucking do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you up to tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah, mate, put on that D&B tune that you played the other day. Yeah, that's what it's like. And um, it just messes your voice. It don't always, don't get me wrong, it don't always. But yeah, he is he is right. You know, I was, I'm blessed to have entered into the movie alongside him. He was patient with me. He gave me guidance. And I just took it. You know, we had a good rapport on set. He has 75 movies made. I have 75 bar fights made. And that's it. We had a good back and forth. All of the twitching, the, 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 the struggling to even connect one word into the next word, the constant blinking. This is the worst I've ever seen him. And we've seen him in some states now. But what we're seeing is getting worse, which means what he is doing is clearly getting worse. And look, there's no secret how drug addiction, you know, acts. You start off enjoying it just a little bit and it feels great. And before you know it, you have to take more and more and more to achieve that level of high. And who can afford the most? A man with all the money that Conor McGregor's got. Yeah, all right, mate. You don't have to keep going on about it. Um, no, I'm joking. Um, no, he's 100% right. If you've ever done, you know, any any form of drug, really. I started off young when I was like 13, 14, started smoking. I think I was 14. I don't think I was 13. I might have been. It was year seven. Christ knows. I think it was year seven. I um, started off smoking weed like most people do. Um, I had a breakdown when I was like 14, 15. Couldn't cope with it. I got kicked out of school because I was just off the Richter scale. Um, I got I got expelled from both my schools. I got expelled from primary school and uh, <laughs> and which is quite a big feat to do. It's very very hard to get expelled. I beat a teacher up when I was. Um, <laughs> it sounds <laughs> sounds awful. Um, when I was like seven or eight or something, I beat a te I didn't beat him up. No, I didn't beat him up. I. I kicked him in the ribs a few times i, I shouldn't laugh because it's it's comical when you look back at it but at the time yeah i was diagnosed with adhd and i was quite a, I was you know i had problems put it that way i had problems and uh, by the time i was 15 i was well and truly out of school never got a gcse to my name um and ended up a good fine drug addict for years and uh i, I, I yeah we move on let's get on to this now so as you just seen, like True Geordie, True Geordie said, um, you know, he's stuttering and all that crap. He's stuttering, he's pressured speech. Um, it's almost like schizophrenic. People with schizophrenia get that kind of that delayed, you know. It's where your brain's not functioning correctly, really, let's be honest. And uh, Connor's brain is not functioning correctly because he's abusing drugs. You know, it might not be, there might not be evidence yet 
And what I mean by that is, you know, there's not videos of him literally doing racks of coke up. Do you know what I mean? There's not, you know, like Amy Winehouse, there was videos of her doing crack pipes and all sorts. There's none of that. Well, not that I've seen. Not that I've seen, but um, but yeah, he's clearly, I mean, this this is what shocked me. And uh, I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. Um, this clip was from three years ago. Three years ago. Look at the difference in the guy. Every time I sit in an interview, it's, oh, why are you here? You have too much money. You're too successful. You're doing it all, blah, blah, blah. You know, in the last fight, I kind of bought into that. You know, I was in the press conference and a guy was reading out a quote of mine from many years ago where I was, like, talking about, I can't wait. I'm going to I'm gonna put my mother in a mansion. I'm going to, you know, my girlfriend's going to have a car for every day of the week. And, you know, I was feeding into that. Wow, I did all this. You know, I, I, I'm not even, I'm, I'm where I am. I'm grateful. I'm proud of where I am and what I've achieved. But there's a lot more left in me. I'm still very young. I'm very fresh in the game and I'm a dangerous man Stephen I'm the most dangerous of them all you know what I mean this I've 19 knockouts in my mixed martial arts career Saturday night I will get my 20th it'll be my 12th UFC main event only 22 years of age fresh as anything I'm ready to go so I'm gonna prove how dangerous I am because trust me in the mindset I'm in I'm really really dangerous it's not gonna be pretty what's gonna happen to this man in here I've lost my so I've got that quote coming up now that we're watching a minute um look at the determination on the guy three years ago I mean three years ago look how quickly drugs has changed this man he's sad very sad you know i make jokes of it and stuff i make jokes about my own life because i can and to be fair i make jokes about drug addicts now because i've been there and done it and i feel like well I've, i'm all right i could i could make those jokes because i was there once um i'm 10 years sober if you don't know yeah so you know, that I'm not saying that that is a, like, uh, I'm a better place. I am, I mean, but I'm still, I'm still a drug addict, you know. I mean, I'm still one of the lads, like, I'm just 10 years sober. So I can rip it out of everyone. Like, I've still got my mates ringing me up saying, oh, mate, like, you know, the gear's getting to me and all that. And I'm just like, get off it, mate. Like, uh, do you know what I mean? I ain't got time for this, bruv. Like, that's how it is. I was just joking around. Um, but, but. Look at the determination. Look at everything that Connor was, man. Everything. He was just... Uh, it's just sad to see, isn't it? He was unreal. You know, he, in that clip, he was so sharp and with it and, you know, um, present. Present. He had this presence about him. He was in the moment. And now he's like, he's licking his lips and just drooling. Do you know what I mean? Not getting his words out properly, struggling, struggling to, you know, there's, when you're on form like that, you, you, like Connor was on, so on form that anything anyone said to him was bang. I could take that, manipulate it. I knew what he was doing. It was like, he was on, on like a different level. And uh, I've been there. I don't mean this in a thing, but I think we've all probably been there when you're having a really good night. And you're on point and you're making the best jokes. You're in the pub and everyone's chatting and you've got it. You know what I mean? You're all over the place, but you've got everything in control. Uh, it sounds like the nights I was doing cocaine, to be fair. Um, but you know what I mean? I f you, that feeling. Connor had that feeling years ago. You know, and it's sad. Look at, look at his determination in that. And determination to be what? A drug addict. End up a drug addict like every other celebrity does. So this is the quote. If you haven't heard it, this almost, it, it makes me well up. Because I love, the one thing that I love the most, one of the greatest things I love the most, is watching stuff before people got famous. Because it shows you the humanity in them. And I love it. You know, Tupac, um, early interviews before he was big. You know, um, Mike Tyson early, early fights. You know, the, the, the road to world champion, becoming heavyweight title. You know, Conor McGregor talking in the gym. You know, there's so much. There's so much of it. Um, I just love it. Like Ed Sheeran. There's a fake. I, I love watching it. There's a famous um, gig that he done. Gig that he done Ed Sheeran in the back of someone's garden in front of about 10 people in a barbecue and apparently got paid something to eat. I, I don't know the full story, but apparently got paid something to eat. You can YouTube it. Um, and he was homeless at the time. Mate, like, now look at him. It's just something different. Um, and this speech is probably my favourite speech um, without throughout the whole fighting. Um, I might even do my favourite speech 
my favourite speeches. I think I might have done it already, but I, ne- I need to do some more because Connor wasn't in it. Um, one of my, one of my, no, I, I, we'll get to it, but that's what, I, I, I don't know why I'm explaining to you about making a video, I suppose you might want to watch it, um, let me know, um, but yeah, listen to this, this is the ultimate, and then, we'll watch, we'll watch it all in one, because it'd be good, um, so this is the first speech where he's, before he's big, you know, he's obviously being filmed, so he's becoming big, but it was obviously early in his career, and then the clip of him um, sitting in a conf- uh, the press conference where some where a reporter asks uh, brings it back up, and uh, you the, the look on his face just tells you everything that he's sitting there, and it, in that moment it took him right back, and it's it's one of the most beautiful moments in the whole of you know in our modern day fighting era because it's MMA. These two clips are probably the most beautiful moment ever. I mind doing this game, yeah? Like Vincent Van Gogh. He dedicated his life to his uh, art and lost his mind in the process. That's happened to me. But fuck it. And that gold belt is around my waist. And my mother has a big mansion. And my girlfriend has a different car for every day of the week. And my kids' kids... I have everything they ever want. Then it will pay. Then, I, then I'm happy I lost my mind. Yeah? I'll die a crazy old man. Oh, I wanted to read you a quote from 2013 that you said. Uh, it's really poignant, uh, and I think it deserves to be read out in full, so just bear with me. I've lost my mind on this game, like Vincent van Gogh. Dedicated his life to his art, and he lost his mind in the process. That's happened to me, but fuck it. When that gold belt is around my waist and my mother has a big mansion, my girlfriend has a car for every day of the week and my kids' kids get everything they ever wanted, then it will pay. Then I'll be happy. I lost my mind. Can you just reflect and talk to me about how that makes you feel hearing that in 2021? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, it's been so I've, I've got it done and I'm up here. Mad as a brush, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been through it all, my friend. You know, I appreciate, I appreciate that. And uh, it's been a world ride for me. It's not been easy at times, but, but you know, what a life. And I, I tell you what, I wouldn't want it to be any other way. I'm very excited to be back here. I'm very excited to have fans back in the, in the area. I'm very excited with the competition, the multiple competition. Yeah. I just feel invigorated, you know what I mean? And as you said, I'm about artist, artistry and all, and Vinnie Van Gogh, I'm going to paint a picture, a beautiful picture here inside this octagon on Saturday night, and I'm very excited to do so. I just want to say, I'm so glad the reporters and people didn't cheer or anything. They made that moment extremely special. And and the way, I loved the way Connor was laughing, and then he realised that actually this is a moment, and uh, it's just a beautiful moment. Um, this is some clips whilst we finished the video um, of just where Connor was. I mean, there you go. So, yeah, um, so that's the Connor we want to see. That's the Connor we want back. Look at him there. That's the Connor that we love. And uh, sadly, that's what drugs do. Um, so, I suppose I'll just say my story quickly. So, when I OD'd, I, I won't get into the full drug history of me. But when I OD'd, um, I'll tell you how drugs... I suppose I could tell you how drugs got me. So when I, I was an alcoholic for about 10 years, split up with the missus at 25, 26, something like that. And uh, one night I was out with the lads and uh, I'd never done gear up till then. Never touched it because I always knew. Um, I, I, to be fair, I never I never liked drugs because I didn't want to die. I was too scared of dying. And uh, I'd anyway, I, I suppose at that moment in life, I'd lost everything, lost a girl, whatever. And um, I was in that relationship for 10 years. Obviously, as I grew up, uh, looking back now, it probably did affect me more than I'd like to admit at the time. And uh, I basically tried a bit of cocaine and uh, that was it. The rest was history. Within a year and a half, um, I was a completely broken man. I had nothing. I'd sold my gold. Not that I had loads of gold, but I, I, it breaks my heart today because I sold my dad's um, my dad's chain that he bought me, and my dad re- actually died when he was um, 
uh, when I was like earlier on, it, 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 yeah, the whole thing just it, it messed me up. To be honest, um, it, no, I say that he died. He died when I was really sh at the end of my drug addiction, and uh, it just there was too much going on, and um, it, that's one thing that's that drugs took from me. My dad's chain that he bought me, and um, obviously. So what happened was I was an alcoholic. I got into cocaine and uh, I started sniffing cocaine. And um, I'm just looking back thinking how sad it is, to be fair. Um, started sniffing cocaine and... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, started, so, yeah, started doing drugs, right? And I started sniffing cocaine. And then within a year and a half... Um, I started doing Mandy and all sorts. If you don't know what Mandy is, M MDMA. And uh, I went to a rave and uh, I'd done too much MDMA. And um, I, I could, I was in the rave and my vision was going. I knew I was ODing. I put it that way, I knew I was ODing. And I walked out the rave and uh, I remember walking down the road and ringing an ambulance because I knew I was ODing, even though I was ODing. I still knew I was ODing and I rung an ambulance and my vision was going black. I was getting blackness. Anyway, I rung the ambulance. And uh, the next thing I know, this is it. I, I rung the ambulance. And the next thing I know, um, I woke up in the hospital with heart monitors on and uh, heart stuff with a nurse sitting next to me. And uh, I, I woke up and said to the nurse, I looked at her and said, uh, I said, how long have I been unconscious for? And she looked at me and went, uh, you haven't been unconscious? And I was like, it blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind. You can imagine me laying there with all these pads on me and all that. And I said, uh, I said, Christ, like, I thought I was unconscious. She said, no. She said, we found you at uh, the bus station and you said you was in a zoo um, with the lions. And I was like, yeah, nah, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I was quite a broken man at that point. The doctor come over to me and uh, he said, what's your name? Cause he didn't know my name. They said, what's your name? I said, the Mozart fuck. <laughs> I said, the Mozart fuck. He said, right, tell me your real name. I said, no, it's the Mozart fuck for the minute. Um, no, nah, I'm joking. Yeah. And he said, uh, he said, right. He said, um, he said, we've, you've been very close to having a heart attack. He said, to be fair, he said, I'm quite surprised you haven't had a heart attack. He said, we, we've been monitoring you for the last four or five hours, however long I was unconscious for, even though I wasn't. He said, you, you're in quite a bad way, mate. And uh, he said, you've clearly OD'd. You, you, you know, we can get your help or whatever. Like, I think you need help with your drug addiction. And I said, yeah, like, appreciate it, whatever. And I look back, I would like to go and see him now, that doctor. And uh, anyway... Um, I knew I had some Mandy in my sock, so I went into the toilet, done some more Mandy. Like I say, I was a broken man, done some more Mandy, got a taxi home and went back out on it. All my mates were still out on it at like 8 in the morning, so I was, I was back out on it all day. And then after a week, uh, it really started getting to me, and about a week later, I had then done some more Mandy, and um, and it just wasn't everything. My mind was completely gone, and uh, after that, I started my road to recovery, basically, and it took me about a year, a year and a half of therapy, um, and then I got out of it, and now I've been 10 years sober. So hopefully, Connor, um, I'd love to see that, mate. I, I, it's such a shame that we've got to witness this. You know, I, I respect Connor so much. Um, he's made some mistakes, yeah, but, um, but he was a fighter, and he brought a lot to the MMA game. I mean, he made the MMA game, really. Um, you know, he just... We want to see him back. We want to see Connor back. So, yeah, there you go. There's my drug addiction crap um, and Connor McGregor crap at the minute. Have a good one, everyone. And stay after drugs. Don't do you any good. Look at Connor. Look at Connor three years ago. Who would you rather be? Put it that way. Who would you rather be?